believing now, in his young charge. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem of Mexico, followed by the national anthem of Japan. これより両選手の栄誉を称え、両国国歌演奏のセレモニーを行います。ご来場の皆様。この有明アリーナ北側の両国国旗に向かいましてご起立そしてご脱帽をお願いいたします。ご協力ありがとうございましたどうぞご着席くださいい続きまして JBC 日本ボクシングコミッション萩原実コミッショナーのコミッショナー宣言です<笑>コミッショナー宣言ただいまから行われます WBO 世界スーパーフライ級タイトルマッチチャンピオン中谷潤と対挑戦者アルヒ・コルテスの12回戦は昨日午後1時規定通り厳重なる身体検査と計量を行い幸い両選手ともすべてに的確でありましたので私はこの試合を WBO 世界スーパーフライ級タイトルマッチと認定いたします。2023年9月18日一般財団法人日本ボクシングコミッションコミッショナー萩原実Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome Nippon no boxing fan no Minasama Konbanwa And indeed, we welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ariake Arena here in Tokyo, Japan, for a big night of action coming your way, brought to you by Take In Promotions and Top Rank Incorporated. This world title bout in the ring is sanctioned by the WBO. The president is Francisco Valcarcel, supervisor Leon Penasillo Jr. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside from the United States, Lynn Carter. 
Also from the United States, Efren LeBron. And from Puerto Rico, Luis Ruiz. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout from the United States, Steve Willis. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the defending world champion fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white trunks with multicolor and red trim, hailing from Sagamihara, Kanagawa, Japan. He weighed in at 114 and three quarter pounds. This two division world champion is undefeated in his campaign with a record of 25 wins, no losses, and 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBO flyweight world champion and the current undefeated reigning and defending WBO super flyweight champion of the world, introducing Junto. the ring, the challenger fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing black trunks trimmed with the colors of the Mexican flag. Hailing from Xochimilco, Mexico City, La Ciudad de Mexico. He weighed in at 114 and one half pounds. His record stands at 25 wins, three losses and two draws, with 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making his first attempt at a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger and the WBO number six ranked super flyweight world contender, introducing Arhi Cortez. <laughs> Once again, a referee in charge now to give instructions, Steve Willis. Okay, simple. Low, low. Okay. That's it. Oh, that was simple. <laughs> I see Willis. <laughs> low, low. Which these days maybe is the most important instruction you can give in boxing. Yeah, especially considering yeah, what we've with been that was, with that waistband. Oh, this, <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get that conversation started. <laughs> Christina Ponter and Jamel Herring here with you. Glad to have you with us. Ariaki Arena Junto Nakatani looking to make his title defense for the first time of that WBO World Super Flyweight title. Cortez looking for his first world title shot. This one scheduled for 12. And already you can see Nakatani using that long range and in, in, in reach with the jab from, from the southpaw position. Yeah, you can see the difference in the reach right away as Argy Cortez, 25-3-2 with 10 KOs, is three inches shorter and has a three inch shorter reach as he tries to shoot the right hand and already i don't i don't i mean like how nakatani is kind of reaching with the jab he may want to like kind of step in like like that. That. <laughs> yeah. on the button he connects with the right and as, and as, turn, as far as Cortez, he can't he can't um, afford to sit on the outside trying to find a box. He might have to you know step in a bit using the maybe double up his jab to get in because you can tell already Nakatani is going to definitely try to fight this entire fight long range if you allow him to because that's that, that's where he feels comfortable at. So you got to make him feel you got to make him feel uncomfortable and impress the on the action. Nice counter from Cortez. Try to catch Nakatani when he opens up. He just missed there with that lead left-handed Cortez. And boxing fans may be familiar with Cortez from his September 2022 fight against Juan Francisco Estrada. He lost a very close unanimous decision in that fight, but a very valiant effort against the future Hall of Famer Gallo Estrada. Right now he's getting picked off though from the outside to Nakatani. And those long distance range shots. And Junto Nakatani will sit there all day because most of those shots, especially early on this round, I mean, every time he threw, he landed. And at times, sometimes those shots hurt the most, especially when you, when you allow your opponent to get full leverage off those shots. Nice body shot from Nakatani. You gotta watch the heads, though. This, this, and this is the danger of a southpaw and orthodox fighter fighting. You know all about that, my friend. 
yeah. southpaw. And you've had to deal with your share of, you know, cuts, cuts and butts as well. And butts and <laughs> 25 seconds left here in round one. Junto Nakatani using every bit of that jab as a right hand gets in there for Cortez. And Cortez needs to continue, um, you know, forcing Nakatani to his right so he can he can land that big right hand, which is all, all you know, which is basically called the, the softball killer. But he ha he, ha he has to work his way in there as well. Call the big, big left hand. Left hand to end. Round one, and we want to talk about left hand. This one heard around the world in round 12. That one right there. My goodness. That perfectly placed shot in round 12 completely laid out Andrew Maloney, who was giving a valiant effort, albeit hit the canvas a couple times in that fight back in May of this year, but Junto Nakatani after that, I mean, people that you can't help but take notice. I mean, right. he's, I think he's ranked still maybe number five, I believe, um, at junior flyweight, or excuse me, at junior bantamweight, but he's a problem, Jamal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And like, I, mean I knew about him before that, but that that was kind of his his announcement to the world there. And like like we spoke earlier before um, before we got on air, you know, how does he, how does he live up to that performance? You know, will, will the pressure get to him? Or will, or will he continue living up to the moment? Well, and that's a good question because that's kind of something that I asked Rudy Hernandez when I had a brief text conversation with him trying to get some information on what Nakatani's camp would be like. And he's like, man, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on him coming off that performance and uh, that win over Maloney. It's going to be really hard to top that. I know there's high expectations for Junto coming into this bout. But when you're champion now, which he has been now two times over, you're always going to have that target on your back. You just got to continue to improve. And, and right now, as we're looking, this is where Cortez needs more of that. He needs, he needs, but he needs to force his way in the inside smartly, not, not, and not crowd himself. But he definitely needs to get on the inside because Nakatani is going to continue just pop shotting him all night if he allows it, just like that, and, 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 and probably cruise to an easy victory or catch him with a big left hand at the end of those shots. Continuing to pop that jab out there as Nakatani, even just using it to keep his distance. Yeah. Not always necessarily throwing it to land, and, and but pretty, to keep Cortez thinking and to yeah. set up that left hand. It's pretty much a range finder at times, or you know, or, or he's me and, and he can measure it to land that big left hand, just like that. Nice jab from Nakatani. Cortez using some feints there, trying to get his way in. Waiting to land a right hand of his own, trying to time Nakatani as he gets it down low there, and then look, Nakatani looks to counter. And I think that's maybe like the first time we've seen Nakatani's back hit, hit against the rope, because I was, I was just about to point out that for the most part, he just, you know, continues circling, circling. Even though he's going to Cortez's right hand, he he's not he's not in harm's way because, again, you know, that, that jab is offsetting Cortez, and he, and he just, you know, basically beating him with the basics and just using the, using the middle of the ring. Boxing is so beautiful when you just do the basic thing so well, and the jab. Yeah. Is the key, and yeah, and I, and I always say that you, you can um you can be you can beat anyone with the basics. You got to just be smart and just know, you know, you got to just know who you are. I, I I never considered myself as a, as a flashy fighter. I just thought, you know, I, I just went in there myself as a sophomore. That was enough for that was basically enough right there to, to really, you know, offset orthodox fighters. But yeah, you could just, just pretty much beat a fighter with just the basics. And right now, you see Nakatani just using basic one twos. He just got caught with a good right hand from Cortez. But yeah. Again, Cortez Those. finally able to get inside a little bit there. Just under 20 seconds left go, to go in round two now. But I fear that if, the longer Cortez stays out there, the, the longer he plays himself in harm's way of getting hit with a big with a big left hand. He's trying to loop that lead left hand is Cortez looking for a home for the right missing there. Two rounds in the books. Still to come on our card this evening. Up next, Tenshin Nasukawa taking on Luis Guzman. And then our main event, Kinshiro Taraji looking to defend his WBC and WBA Light Flyweight Championship against Heki Butler. 
ring magazine belt also on the line in our main event. That one's scheduled for 12 championship rounds. And once again, Rudy Hernandez back in the corner. In a moment ago, you seen in the replay um, when Cortez had his best moments. On the on the end of um on the point of view from I'm not gonna uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm messing up the thing yeah, here, but you tell Nakatani. yeah, but not, but but then um, from, the, from the from the um frame of um, Nakatani, he can't afford to pull straight back out, especially with a guy like um Cortez who's gonna who's just gonna follow him out and hit him with shots. He has to he has to continue to use those angles and continue to turn his opponent. Round three, Christina Poncher and Jamel Herring here with you. Right back to the jab goes Nakatani as he hooks it with that lead right hand from the southpaw stance. Just a bit. Has yet to really take it down to the body of Cortez. No. Doesn't have to. Nice shot from Cortez, but as you see now, Cortez is in, inching his way in instead of staying on the outside so much. And, he, and he's forcing, now he's forcing Nakatani to use the entire ring. This is where he wants him. And right now, Nakatani is, is, is going into the direction of Cortez's right hand, so he has to be aware of that as well. Seen the feet getting tangled up a bit just a moment ago. Which happens so often when you have the orthodox and southpaw fighters, each of those lead foot for each respective fighter trying to battle for that outside position, which as you can see right there, when he let that left hand go, has come more Nakatani's way as he's been able to establish everything just off that jab in the first two rounds. And for the first time, they kind of get a little rough there on the inside here in round three. Yeah, and, and, and again, um, Nakatani needs to start changing directions because he's, he's kind of going, again, he's going in the, in the direction of Cortez's right hand. And every time he gets too close, Cortez will, uh, you know, let that let that um that right hand go. Which earlier you mentioned wasn't too much of a problem because of the the jab of Nakatani and him keeping it at range. But nonetheless, I mean, if you're going to be predictable in your movement, Cortez is going to be able to capitalize on that eventually. Now he switches directions just a bit, going towards his own again. right. But here he goes again, going 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 towards his left. Nice, nice left hand and get out of the way afterwards from Nakatani. You see, he kind of changed that jab yeah. into a little, little hook. He did, and he was able to land the left hand right there flush. Yeah, the, the little check, the little check arm um, hook kind of kind of threw Cortez off balance, allowed to throw that left hand afterwards. You see him lining it up. <laughs> Cortez trying to eat up some of that differential in size when Nakatani opens up as he's trying to throw at the same time. That's the only way he's really been able to get inside is that strong, straight left hand lands again for Nakatani. And, and, and Cortez can take that away by he, he just hit him with a good with a good right hand there, but he has to start cutting the ring off. He, you know, he's doing a lot of following, so he's just allowing Nakatani just to basically use up the majority of the round to just circle the ring and just box and pop shot. Yeah, round three looks much like the other two. Absolutely. Looking into the corner of Cortez now. I see a little, a little nick under his eye. You can see lined up, Nakatani just lining up, you know, using that jab as a range finder and just lining up that left hand. Nice little, nice little counter left hand right there. So he kind of slid over and got out the way. He just missed with that counter right, did Cortez. Round four. Round four, Christina Poncher and Jamel Herring here with you. Juso Nakatani and Arky Cortez. Mm. Nice right hand to start this round for Cortez. Probably with Cortez's best punch so far in this fight. Agreed. Yeah, but he gets hit with a good left hand and follow with a, with a right jab from Nakatani. 
again. Weiss now, with yeah. the left hand, and then right back out for Nakatani. Again, Cortez can't afford to just sit back there and, 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 and box the boxer. He has to, you know, he has to, you know, probably take chances and, and, and make it a bit rough, a, a bit rough in there. But you can clearly see that Nakatani's getting warmed up. He's, he's a lot more fluent with, with, with his shots and his movement. Cortez almost got caught there reaching. He has to step in with the shots. He's not, he's not gonna catch, he's not gonna catch Nakatani like that. Especially with one shot. He got caught there again. You know, and Nakatani is staying loyal to that jab for sure. And it's just been giving Cortez all kinds of fits as he's just really struggled to find his way inside. Mm. And now you can see Nakatani now, like warming up and fighting rhythm yep. with his shots. I mean, he's just in rhythm now here in round four. He's kind of picking his shots at this point. Cortez is going to have to change things up. Mm. Another good left hand from Nakatani. And he's out of there. Cortez's problem is, though, like he'll, he'll sit there and, and just watch too long and just staring and staring. And then he won't, he won't fire off until he gets hit. Yeah, it's been very rare in these exchanges, Jamel, where Cortez has actually shot first. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. And a lot of that, though, credit to Nakatani staying loyal to that jab. Yeah, the jab, he keep, he's keeping him busy and occupying. And, and that jab kind of blinds Cortez. And then right afterwards, he'll slip in that left hand. And that body is good body shot from Nakatani. Mm. 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 one, two. Right there, yep. And now Nakatani is filled. You can definitely see that he's filled it, and, he, and he's found his rhythm Absolutely. in range. Absolutely. Under 30 seconds left here in round four. Mm. Cortez just not able to get any sort of offensive momentum going through the first four rounds. Especially this round, for sure. Beautiful thing when you can continue to win, win rounds. Mostly just throwing your jab. I know that a lot of boxing fans that love to see action inside and a ton of punches, which we saw in our last fight. But when you can have your way and win rounds clearly just primarily with your jab, yeah. I it's mean, a beautiful thing. It's like it's like with the um the late great Nassim Richard you should say, um swim and not get swim and not get wet. <laughs> like, you know, he, he's letting his hand meaning he, you know. Get your punches off, but don't, you know, don't get hit in return. That was the best punch of the fight for Argy Cortez. Unfortunately, there was not much else in that round offensively for him as there's the right hand landing for Nakatani. You see, I kind of think he busted his nose up a bit. But again, and like you pointed out, that right hand came in the early, you know, part of the, of the round. But after, afterwards, it, it was clearly all Nakatani. Jamel, if you're in the Cortez corner, Long and you are arguably are down four rounds to none, what are you telling your fighter to kind of change the tide here? What adjustments can he make? Wake the hell up. <laughs> Push forward. People might be telling us the same thing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, three in the morning here. Wake the up. Well, you know, you you gotta you got you gotta start. You got you gotta fight. You you can't you can't you can't outbox. What well, you can, but if you're not if you're not really much of a of a boxer, a pure boxer, you you gotta you know you got you gotta start. Get under those shots, probably bend, bend a little bit more at the waist and, you know, and, and march forward, but also throwing some feints to get him to react because at times Nagatani he'll overextend his punches just like that, at, you know, just like that. But if you, if, you, if, you, if you don't make him miss, he's going to hit you with that all day. Here he looked to counter there with the right hand. Mm. But Nakatani also is, does a really good job at measuring that distance once he throws his punches. He's, he gets, even if he goes straight back, it's just enough back to get out of the way of the shorter arms of Cortez. And you see how he just had to dip under, just like, yeah, he needs, he needs to start breaking at the ways, get under, get under that, those, those long shots, shots, and continue to push forward. Not, you know, Nakatani doesn't feel comfortable, as you can see right now, when you push him backwards. Also, start cutting up the ring. Don't, don't allow him to get out too far. You know, st step over. Oh, there was a beautiful straight shot that landed for Nakatani. 
Another one. And another one. And I can see right now, for the most part, the Jazz is the range finder. And he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna throw that, that big left hand. Right there is what Cortez needs to do. You got you to gotta, you gotta rough him up. Cortez looking to land that right hand there. But don't just follow. Start, you know, start putting your jab out. Don't leave it out there like that, though. But start, you know, start pumping the jab. Why not meet the southpaw jab with your left hand, right? Kind of counter it a little bit. Nice, nice, nice um, left hook from Cortez just a moment ago, though. Ooh, good bow. Oh, that hurt. Nice shot. That, that hurt. one hurt. That delayed reaction drops Cortez in round five. He's got mouthpiece out. Still trying to breathe off that one. Steve Willis taking him over to rinse out his mouth. He's buying himself a few more seconds. Savvy veteran move there. <laughs> Steve Willis dragged him over. He did, he knew what he was doing. 30 seconds left here to go in round oh. five. Will Juto Nakatani be able to finish? Oh, no, body shot, that body, his body shot. Cortez yeah. is clamming up and down again in round five is Cortez. Will he make it out of round five? Junto Nakatani teeing up with the jab. Mm. Shooting the left hand once again, firing back his Cortez, and he will. Two knockdowns scored. And he slowly walked back to that corner, even though the corner wasn't, wasn't a far distance away. Take a look at it, Jamel. But this is just the first knockdown. That Boom. body was, shot. Yeah, delayed reaction. He felt it. Thought about Ooh. it for a minute. Let me let me go sit down for a bit. And again, bam. Yeah. Ooh. And here's the second knockdown, I believe. It was a barrage of punches, but again, I, it, it, the, he he didn't fully recover from the, that first body shot. And it, that second right there, it kind of nipped him, but it was just enough. Round six. Round six, this one, a world championship fight scheduled for 12. And Nakatani scores two knockdowns in round five. That body shot really took a lot of out of Cortez. Let's see how he recovers here in round six. Nice left hand left from Nakatani. And if I'm him, I'm going back to, I'm going back to that body. And interestingly enough, uh, Nakatani hadn't put a lot of water in the basement, if you will, up until that point. And again, a little bit of a trip there as no knockdown is ruled on that by he Steve Willis. He felt that body shot. He felt that body shot. Ooh, he took another, he looked to the side and took a deep breath there, yeah. partner. But Nakatani knows yeah. that he has a hurt fighter in front of him here. And you can tell he's put a little bit more steam as Cortez actually lands a left hand there. Nice jab for Nakatani. Nice right hand from Cortez. Down to the body once again, and a slight warning from Steve Willis to keep it up there with the left hand, maybe a tad bit low. Oh, and that one snaps the head back of Cortez. Cortez clearly is trying, to, he's trying to recover. So with that being said, if I was him, I would kind of just continue moving around the ring. Nice right hand from Cortez, though. But, you know, standing in front of Nakatani, who's clearly, you know, bombing from, from the outside with that left hand, he might want to, you know, use lateral movement step in, or step over left and right at times instead of standing right in front of him. Nice little shot to the, uh, from Cortez to the body. Cortez seems to have his legs back under him now in this sixth round. A minute left to go. He has landed a couple oh. solid That right hand right there lands for Cortez. But that's what he needs to do. Continue pushing Nagatani back. And you can tell that, that, got, that bothered him by Nagatani tying up a bit. Well, yeah, Nagatani can't afford to fall asleep as well either. He has to stay sharp. 
you know what Nakatani's not doing right now, Jamel. He's not. He's not using his range and throwing punches. Right. So that means he was bothered by those by that shot. There we go. Down to the bottom with the left hand for Cortez. 30 seconds left. But Cortez shouldn't. She, he he shouldn't march forward. He should still still putting a jab out there or something or using lateral movement to get inside. I don't think it's a smart idea for him just to continue walking through the front door. Well, he did have some success with arguably his toughest shot landed of the fight for Cortez, but it was that two knockdowns in round five that took him a little bit to recover. And round six is in the books. Let's take a look at that replay. And it's that shot right there. Bam. With the Pulling right out. hand. He pulled out. Pulled Not only backwards. straight back, but without his hands up into yeah. the ropes, a place that he hasn't been often in the fight. Like I said earlier, he, he has to, you know, slide out or, you know, step, step to the side. And his friend and a stable mate who just fought, and I said he's probably going to shower up and get back ringside, right? You did. You called. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Anthony Alasquaga, who won tonight via comeback stoppage in the first bout of the night, watching his stable mate, Junto Nakatani, put in work here. Round seven, Christina Poncher and Jamel Herring here with you. Nakatani scoring two knockdowns in round five. Cortez. Having a little bit of get back there in round six, landing some solid shots. Probably not enough to win him the round, but definitely keep him in the fight. That's yeah, for some, sure. Yeah, definitely some improvement, especially after those two knockdowns. But again, he's going back to sitting on the outside. Nakatani back with the jab, doubling it up. Misses there with the left hand, and Cortez holds. Okay, okay. Got you, got you. Go, go. Watch your hands. And doesn't have that same oomph as he did with the, his little low, with the jab. And it's kind of like he's kind of like forcing, he's kind of pushing his jab at times, as you, as you can see. Lands the left hand there to the body of Cortez. Both land good to, um, body shots. They did, and you know. One of the things that's hard when you call a fight here from the studio is you don't get to see every angle of every shot, right? right? You just get to see what we have on our screen. That's one of the things about being ringside. It's priceless. So, yeah, we're seeing what you guys are all out there seeing as well. Nice left hand from Nakatani. You know, and to your point about that jab, uh, it, it used to be three, four, five at a time, Jim, simply just to keep Cortez off him, and now there's coming one. Yeah. One. He's definitely slowed down on the output with that lead hand. Yeah, he's kind of using the jab. Nice, nice little sneaky left uppercut from Nakatani, but he's kind of using the jab as, as just to keep him out there, keep him at bay. Which he did a lot still in the first half of the fight. It just was with more force, and that one was a nice shot there, that straight left. But it was, um, excuse me, straight right, but it was more of them out of time. Yeah. And then he was changing the he was changing the speed in the in the in an angle as, at times with that jab. Just like that, he changed the little angle right over the shoulder. Yeah, he turned he turned it over right over the shoulder of Cortez. And and now, if you notice now, also Nakatani is kind of using majority of the ring to where as, as in the first two three rounds, he basically kept. Cortez in the center of the ring, but now Cortez kind of is pushing him back towards the ropes where he wants him at, just right there. Just need, he just can't afford to smother himself, you know, continue using range and being smart with it, smart at the same time. Nice little overhand right from Cortez. I don't know if that landed too flush, but that was that was I mean, good effort. That's the shot that's going to be the shot if he can land it right there. And yeah, that'll be a shot because at times Nakatani, he, he'll throw his jab from his chest rather than protecting his chin. Nice little sneaky, long uppercut. Yeah, 
that right hand through the guard. And you know, if there's a, if there's a, you know, we, we talk about sometimes fighters taking a round off, yeah. if you will. That might have been a little bit of what we saw there uh, from Nakatani as he backed off a little bit in round seven. Looking at that shirt, is that, is that says Gucci with a Adidas logo on it though? Collab. <laughs> With the Louis Man papers <laughs> across too. Don't don't leave that out. Round eight. Round eight. Back to the jab goes Nakatani. See if he can pick up the activity level here in round eight and a right hand for Cortez. Cortez really has got to turn it up. He's likely down big on the cards, especially with those two knockdowns, that 10-7 round in round five. And, and I, 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 I like what he's doing. Like, he's trying to push forward, but he needs to push forward with more than one jab because, you know, Nakatani right now is probably, he's probably, you know, counting that, like that one, he probably, you know, realizing that he's only throwing one jab, and then what, what, what happens when he does that? He'll bring the jab back, and Nakatani will, will come back with, with two shots of his own, or his own jab. So one here, one there. And, and it, I mean, even when he throws that one one jab when he's, and he misses, he kind of freezes up Nakatani. But again, he needs to follow up with another shot behind it. Mm. Started off with that with that sneaky left uppercut, followed with a right hook from Nakatani. And again, it seems at times that you know Cortez wakes up after he gets hit with a, with a good shot. You're fighting for a world title here, Jamel. You got to let your hands go. You got to go yeah. take it from the champ. You got to take a risk. You got to take a risk. You yeah. At this point, I mean, round eight, he's got to, he's got to try to take some risks. And he knows he has the he has the ability to hurt Nakatani because he he did it. He did it. So he, he know he knows he can hurt him, but he just has to believe in himself and take and take more chances. Ooh, body. body again. Yeah. Strong shot there from Nakatani. You seen that kind of froze him up with Cortez up a bit, a, a bit again. And it's been the straight shots to the body, right to the middle of the gut. It's not these looping shots around the side that you see tag in the liver. Well, that body shot again. This time he, he looped that, that left hand. Like a looping uppercut. I actually thought we were going to see more of those uh, the other night from Venado Lopez, right? Right. Looking for that shot. We'll talk more about him in a minute. And then Nagatani going back to the body again. And you see, you see, and you clearly see he kind of slowed Cortez down and made him hesitant from coming back in. That clearly shows you that those body shots are working. <laughs> he's measuring, he's lining it up. There we go. Oh, yeah. Even with that little, that little hesitation step, that little faint step to, shed, to set up the left hand down to the body. You know, it has Cortez even just taking a brief little step back. Other feet, Knocked he kind of there. stepped on his foot there, yeah. Knocked balance, yeah. Yep. Mm. <laughs> oh, Ooh. Combination there from Nakatani to end the round. <laughs> Take a look. Again, set it up everything with the jab. Everything comes off with the jab from Nakatani. Two good left shots, left hands, and bam, right to the body. Another one to the body, but he kind of fell again. Sometimes he'll fall in and give up and give up his range. He, I think he tripped up. I think he kind of got tripped up again. He fell over. He fell. He fell a little bit too over his front foot with that left hand. And that was the end, the end of the round, I believe, right here. Round nine. Round nine in the scheduled 12 round championship fight. The champion Junto Nakatani looking to make his first world title defense of that super flyweight title that he won that was vacant in his last fight against Andrew Maloney. 
Cortez looking to capture his first world title and his first world title shot. Junto Nakatani also a flyweight world champion. And even though Nakatani, you know, is clearly probably up, up in this fight, of course, especially with those two knockdowns, I felt like he was a little bit more aggressive his last outing than what he's showing now. I mean, he's still winning, still winning in rounds big at times, but again, he seemed a lot more aggressive his last, uh, last time out against Maloney. Yeah, I would have to agree, and we talked about this earlier with our last fight. Sometimes, you know, the stage, what's at hand, et cetera, you fighting up to the level of your competition and... Back at home. You were fighting Andrew Maloney. It was a vacant world title. You guys, they both had earned that opportunity. It was a big card. I mean, that was a fantastic fight for Junto Nakatani. And he had his best performance when he needed it the most. But once you win that world title, and this is the second time around for him, second weight class, mm, good left hand. If that target's on your back, you're going to get everybody's best fight every time out. Right. Yeah, I mean, to add on to that, it's, it's expected, especially when you win a world title. Now, now, it's, now it comes down to, okay, I'm a world champion, but am I considered the best in my division? So with that being said, you're always going to want to step it up a lot more with each and every fight. When you're talking about a stacked division at 115 pounds. Yes. I mean, Gallo Estrada, Chocolatito, um, mm. Ioka, uh, so wrong beside. I mean, we're talking. Yeah, it's stacked. <laughs> we're talking stacked division. and. You want to separate yourself or continue to move up in those rankings. You just got to continue to dominate. But that was, like I said, I mentioned this earlier, a concern of Rudy Hernandez. He said, how are we going to top that last fight? How are we going to top those, ex you know, how are we going to live up to the expectations based on how shot, we Bob performed? And, yeah, yeah you know, body shot. Yeah. <laughs> three. I know that's why he looked it off, and I kind of did too, because I thought they just got tangled up, but. No, he Maybe was right probably, partner. There was, he, a, yeah, there was, he was a shot probably, that landed there. It was, it, was, it was a slight pause. It was a slight pause in, in, in the action. Yeah, Cortez kind of shook it off, but he was hurt to the body in round five. Here comes Nakatani. Oh, oh nice counter caught. right hand yeah. there from Cortez catching Nakatani, pulling straight back. Uh, yep. oh, that's most of the time he's caught him in this fight, Jamel. It's been with a counter. <laughs> From, from Nagatani pulling straight back. Hey! Rounds are flying. Okay, and then we're, we're going to get a, re a replay, a shot of, the, of that knockdown. But yeah, that body, those body shots are clearly still bothering Cortez. Oh, yeah, there was yep. a... Yeah, see, he dropped the hands. Right yeah, there. he dropped the hands a bit. Okay, but... I mean, bam, right there. Fair, right? <laughs> the hands but dropped, yeah. But shorts back down. <laughs> yeah. He threw a couple... Looked to throw another shot, and then that one kind of towards on his back. I don't know. I mean, things got pulled down, but again, that, that, that body shot did definitely affect him. Round 10. As we start round 10, and Nakatani's built himself quite a lead here in his first world title defense. And he goes right and back to the Cortez body. do something spectacular? Can he shift? He needs a knockout. The momentum, because at this point, I mean, that's. He needs a knockout. Yep, you said it. <laughs> yeah. And Nagatani, you see, Cord and that's a sign right there. Whenever a fighter gets hit with a body shot and then goes back to his opponent's body, that, that tells you right there is because he's being bothered by those shots. So he wants to get the same. He wants to ho hopefully have the same effect with his shots to the body as well. You see him now trying to go more and more to that body of Nagatani. But he, he's throwing it so far out that, you know, Nagatani sees it a mile away. He has to step in with those shots. One jab isn't going to do it. Doubling up on the jab there is Nakatani. And he definitely can't afford to stay on the outside because that's, that's where those body shots actually come from. It's, it's, not, it's not so much of Nakatani's inside game. It's that he gets full leverage even on the, on the outside to the body. 
Nakatani's set up that left hand with about five or six jabs, which is more of what we saw in the beginning of the fight. He's back to you know, making it more active and efficient. Mm. Cortez looking to shoot the right hand off the double jab. His corner calling for an uppercut. Want the right hand down low. And you see there, Nakatani, he's, kind of, yeah, he's basically just range, he's just getting his range, find her on again with that jab, and then let go of that left hand to the body head. Miss right there, but again, he, he's found he's found his range again, and, and like you pointed out, he's starting to pump out that that jab a lot more as he did early in the fight. Yeah, his body language for Nakatani looks completely different here, again in round ten. Shades of what we saw in the first half of the fight as he lands a right hand there. Started off with the left hand. Again. Like in Cortez, only lets his hands fly after he gets hit with a good shot. But by that, by then, you know Nakatani's gone. As their feet get tangled up there a bit, and back around the outside goes Nakatani. Good, good body shot from Cortez, though. Right hand to the body. Everything starts with the jab from Nakatani. Just, just, just got him with it. But again, the right hand is a range finder, and then you know the, the left, the back hand will travel a lot further than the lead hand once you when you, when you turn into your shots. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they're telling him you need a knockout here to win the fight. We got to risk it. We got to go for it here. These are the, the, the championship rounds now. And, you know, those body shots, like you said, I mean, they've continued to wear time after time, the jab and then those straight <laughs> left hands to the body. I mean, those body shots from Nakatani put, you know, Cortez on the canvas three times. Cortez pumping that right hand a lot more. You know, he's making the effort. And he's, he's moving forward. But again, you know, you don't want to just, just march in. Put, put something out there. Blind him with your jab. Yeah, but I'm definitely not mad at how he started this round. I mean, a little bit more sense of urgency, trying to get in any way that he can. Sensing that he's got to close that distance yeah. to try to give himself a shot. There we go, right there. Down to nice good right hand to the body there for Cortez. like that. Connects there as well. Down to oh. the body again for Cortez. This is, this, is a good, this is a good exchange. Good effort from Cortez. He just got hit, just got hit with a good left hand there. But again, he, this is the, the best exchanges he's had in a while in this fight. He's got hit with a, le with a good left hand up top from Nakatani. Mm. Catching Nakatani going back. And being first, you know, that's what he that's what he did in the first minute of this round, and so he was able to get off some of those exchanges. And ooh, right there, he eats a straight left hand from Nakatani. He's, he's eating a lot of good straight left hands up top. And I will say, he probably has a, he has a good chin, but maybe just a soft, a, a soft body. So I think Nakatani should like put more, you know, put more effort going back to the body, just like that. See. And you can tell those those bottom because of those elbows and hands drop just a slight bit, and then what happens? The activity stops just for that moment. He's still trying to recover from that body shot, I promise you. I believe you. Still recovering. No, 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 no. Ooh, another shot there. Yeah, from Cortez. 
and that hasn't been a shot that's landed very much. It's been no. more of the right hands for Cortez, but that left hand, you saw the sweat fly right off the head of Nakatani there. Nakatani trying to double up with that left hand there. Nice body, body shot. You can hear those, you can hear those shots. Well, up jab there. <laughs> Steve Willis. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, I, 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 just, no, I Was that a belch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What was that? I thought that was us on that. <laughs> it wasn't us. It definitely wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Willis is known for the expressions that he makes in the ring, too. And if you go back and clip that off, I mean, it definitely sounded like a belch <laughs> took place. Something I that know, I, I feel, his I mean, head went, huh? And I, it's not just us in the room, though. <laughs> It, how do you hear us from Japan, Jamel? Hey, it's hey. definitely not us in the room here in Las Vegas. That was interesting. And he cocked his head to the side. You know, all right, we're back. Oh, his face tells it all, doesn't it? Every time, gotta love my man Steve Willis. Gotta have a little fun. I don't know how much fun Cortez is having in in there right now as we get to the 12th and final round as he's taking some punishment from Junto Nakatani. Round 12, last round. The 12th and final round here in this Super Flyweight World Championship fight, and the champion likely way out ahead. Three knockdowns scored. Mm, there go Cortez. Nice good right hand. Just like he started round 11 strong, just not enough. Right now, Cortez needs to really, really use every second on the clock to make an effort by trying to win this fight because I'm, I'm sure he's down big. There we go, just like that. Yeah, he, he has to fight. Nice, get, nice, nice getting under those punches. Whoa. Yeah, and no, no, need, no need for the headlock <laughs> from Nakatani as I don't think Cortez was amused by that as we have about two minutes left to go in this world championship fight and Nakatani shoots the jab, then the left hand straight there. Looks to hook with the lead right hand. It's so one, two. I think that million dollar nightmare submission hold kind of took the, uh, <laughs> you know, took the rhythm of, of, of a Cortez and slowed him down a bit. Doubling up on the jab there. Cortez looking to land the right hand. Does a better job cutting off the ring there, something that you had called for much earlier in the fight. He's still, he's still allowing not time to escape. Right now, you can tell, you can tell, you can tell, oh. Okay. Steve Willis didn't like Nakatani pushing his head down, but Cortez got a couple shots in there. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Gotta go for broke. Another right hand, another good right hand. Like Nakatani standing in here, though, and fighting like this in a fight that he likely has clearly up on the scorecards, Jamal. No, and then something he's probably have to work on when he goes back to the gym. Oh, good oh, shot there. That hurt, yeah, that hurt looking Cortez. for the finish here in round 12. Cortez holding on for life here. Nakatani pushing it back. 35 seconds to go as he swings him to the canvas. No knockdown. 30 seconds left to go in the fight. Nagatani, I know after this fight, even though he still has Cortez hurt, he's going to have to work on um, not so much smothering his shots when he has, it, but he has his man hurt. Down nice to the body goes Cortez. Cortez. Ten seconds left. Nakatani looping shots. Back to the jab. Nice way to hook with that right hand. Mm. They bang to the bell. Nakatani taps his gloves together. Valiant effort from Cortez tonight, but Junto Nakatani scoring those three knockdowns.
been dominant with that jab. Solid performance from pillar to post for the champ. And he finished that. He finished that uh, that last minute strong. To close out the show. Big smile on the face of his friend and stable mate, Anthony Alas Quaga, and a hug from Rudy Hernandez. The judges will tally up the scorecards and then we'll move on on our program. Coming up next, Tenshin Nasakawa taking on Luis Guzman. In a bantamweight contest. Tenshin fighting out of Tokyo, Japan. Undefeated professional kickboxer and really a superstar there in Japan. It'll be a second professional fight. He's taking on Luis Guzman. Kiko's going to bring it tonight. I'm looking forward to that in our next fight. But meanwhile, we're going to get back to the ring in just a moment with the official decision here for Junto Nakatani, who didn't get the stoppage here tonight. Instead, went the 12-round distance, but it was still a dominant performance. Yeah, yeah, Here's moment. the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judging ringside, Lynn Carter scores about 118 to 107. Judges Efren LeBron and Luis Ruiz both scores about 119 to 106. All three in favor of the winner. And still the undefeated WBO Super Flyweight World Champion, Jun Tho. Undefeated now, increasing his professional record to 26 and 0 with 19 knockouts. WBO World Flyweight Champion Junto Nakatani. Wide scorecards as we expected. Three knockdowns scored. And he remains undefeated and victorious, continuing to build momentum and climb 